So call the meeting to order. I don't have an agenda. Do I have to do anything? Um, no, I don't have either. Presenting. Just presenting to us. Call to order, roll call. Yep. Public comments. And adjournment. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dr. Flores. Ms. Grant present. Ms. Lewis. Present. Uh, Reverend Matisse is excused. Mr. Ross? Here. Ms. Shockey? Here. Ms. Slade? Present. Dr. Baker is excused. And Ms. Present. We re arranged everything. Um, Mr. Oberst? Um, yeah. With the proposed budget. Well, we'll quickly go over the uh, budget hearing PowerPoint that is on the screen behind you. And as board members, you've seen most of this. Reduced or uh, shorten it a little bit for the public, but um, anyways, here we go. And just, just to review, the, just to go into the 1819 school year, uh, some of the major revenue assumptions that are built into the, the budget that will go before the board tonight for approval would be uh, in terms of the foundation allowance, uh, the legislature was uh, very generous to us this year, gave us a $240 per pupil increase. So the 1819 foundation allowance per student will be $7,871. Uh, that's an increase based on our budgeted um, enrollment of about 3.9 million in new dollars, or about 3% more than 2017-18. Should be noted this is the first time in about a decade, a little more than a decade, that the foundation allowance per student, foundation allowance increase exceeded the rate of inflation. The rate of inflation uh, in 2017 was about 2.1%. It's running right around that currently in 2018. Our at risk or $31A dollars and our Readiness funding for preschool, approximately about 15.9 million in this budget, a bit of an increase over the prior year. And then the current year, we're in the first year of the enhancement millage that was approved by the voters, a countywide enhancement millage. Uh, we expect about a $205,000 increase in enhancement millage dollars in 2018-19, bringing that total to just over three and a half million. Again, that's. Uh, uh, that's a millage on all property within the county, goes to the intermediate school district, who then, who then distributes it to the individual school districts based on their proportionate uh, student enrollment. And then a couple of major expense assumptions. We have uh, total employee costs increase in, in approximately, approximately $2.1 million. And then we had some other adjustments in the expense side, including uh, some vacancies that uh, will likely not be filled this year, uh, some reductions in our non-salary expense areas. We did, did have some general inflationary cost increases. We had some new uh, curriculum we, we acquired actually this year and again next year, some new math curriculum. Uh, I will note that there were no layoffs district-wide at all. Any, any uh, uh, staff rationalizations that need to occur could be achieved with uh, resignations, retirements, and again, some open positions that uh, will not be filled. How that translates into the actual dollars, uh, this first slide shows the revenue side of our general fund budget. Uh, again, three columns, as you've seen in prior years. First column is the final from the 2016-17 year. The middle column is what we anticipate to end the current year at, that is after Amendment 2 that was passed uh, just last week. Uh, and then the proposed budget for 1819 is that far right column. So we're expecting in 2018-19 total revenue, and again, look, this, that's the third line from the bottom, total revenue and other financing sources, approximately $210.4 million. Uh, start with our fund balance, expected fund balance to an $11 million at the beginning of the year, 2018-19, and then so we have available $221.5 million to appropriate on this budget, and the appropriations look like this. Again, the three columns, 
the proposed budget for 1819 is a far right column. Uh, instruction, 107.6 million. Support services, 101 million. Community services and facility acquisitions. Total expenditures of 211.5 million approximately. Some operating transfers out to other funds. And so our total appro appropriations are 212.9 million dollars. And that uh, translates into a 18-19 a year budget deficit of about 2 point, almost $2.5 million. And the impact on fund balance is shown in this last slide here. Again, we expect to end the year in June of 18 at 11, just over $11 million in fund balance. And again, we have a 5% minimum fund balance that the state requires under the early warning, early warning calculation. And so we expect to end the year in 2018 at 7.61%. And then that almost $2.5 million 18-19 uh, deficit would get our fund balance at the end of 19, assuming we hit those budget numbers at about $8.6 million or about 5.9% of fund balance, so still in excess of the required minimum of 5%. So that is the 18-19 budget. I will say there are um, you know, no significant, I'm going to say, unusual items. <clears throat> we'll remind everybody that we are opening the Museum High School in uh, August 20th, and school starts next fall. Uh, that's some additional cost of that, of that new high school, and we're also going to add 12th grade to our Frost High School um, that we opened a few years ago. And there's some additional costs associated with that. So that is the 2018-19 budget. Any questions? Uh -huh. <laughs> Which one of these numbers then is, what is, what is the uh, amount we get per kid? Do we know that for certain? That's, that's at $7,871 per kid, yeah. You look on the second or the first slide, the revenue assumptions. Okay, here. And so that's with all the money that we're. Well, that's that's the state foundation allowance. You know, the the actual total dollars per kid. If you add um, up our major federal programs, Title One, our 31A dollars. Um, I don't know. That approximates 11,000, 12,000, 11,000 a kid, maybe. I don't have that calculation in front of me. We, um, at the end of the audit, every year when our books are closed, we do run through a calculation to get the true cost of educating a kid on a per kid basis, both general education and, and, and uh, special education. But um, I will tell you that uh, the cost to educate our kids, obviously, is in excess of revenue we receive, which is why we have the, the uh, budget deficit projected, although it's a small one. So. So the purpose of the hearing is for the public to be Correct. presented and to give the board feedback before the board votes on it in the next meeting. So it may be more appropriate if we have questions regarding the budget to ask in the board meeting. I'm thinking that's when the discussion should happen. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, so with that being said, um, this would be a time to get comment from the public. I see no public calling public forward. No public. <laughs> no public. So um, with that, I guess the meeting is adjourned. Yay. Yeah. That was, that was great. Wendy, nice job. Yeah. <laughs>